And good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming today. On behalf of my colleague, Chi, and uh, my many colleagues at Google, it is our privilege and pleasure to be here with you today to present Project Deschutes. This is Google's open spec CDU contribution to the industry. And we're very excited to be participating in OCP through the contribution of the Project Deschutes specification. Uh, we're grateful to the OCP steering committee for their review and approval of the version 0.8 specification in September of this year. And as Cliff said, it is now available through OCP for your review and feedback. And Chi will share more details about that in the call to action uh, later on in the presentation. The Project Deschutes specification includes the technical design details of Google's fifth generation uh, CDU, as well as the hot aisle containment data center structure we call Redmond, which is compatible with the CDUs and rear door heat exchangers to help enable the deployment of high density liquid cooled IT racks. It also contains the manufacturing quality installation, service, and maintenance procedures that are informed by more than seven years of scale liquid cooling experience at Google. And we're sharing these what we consider to be best practices to help enable uh, fast deployments of reliable equipment throughout the industry. And in addition to the technical details, the spec also identifies the supply ecosystem for uh, com system components that are provided by multiple vendors who are well known in the industry. Later on, Chi is going to be sharing the supply chain strategy uh, for competitive pricing, capacity, lead time reduction, and worldwide availability. It is our hope that the industry will embrace Project Deschutes, and we look forward to collaborating with and learning from the industry through this spec release. So now let's take a technical deep dive into the Project Deschutes CDU. At a high level, the CDU is designed to be among the highest performing CDUs in this form factor in the industry. Uh, from a thermal uh, performance perspective, we are targeting to support two megawatt heat loads at an approach temperature of three degrees Celsius. And the, the, the approach temperature is a common uh, CDU performance metric, which simply represents the temperature difference between the two cold liquids that are available at the CDU. That is, the cold liquid that is being supplied from the CDU to the IT equipment and the cold liquid that is being supplied to the CDU from the facility. Uh, from the hydraulic performance perspective, we're targeting to support 500 gallons per minute at an available pressure head of roughly 80 to 90 PSI on the secondary or the technology cooling loop side of the CDU. And these performance targets are intended to support more efficient cooling of the next generation AI and ML equipment. From a weight perspective, the CDU, a dry CDU, would weigh about 5,300 pounds or about 2,400 kilos and a wet CDU, that is a CDU that is filled with liquid, would weigh about 6,900 pounds, which is about 3,100 kilos. The CDU requires 380 to 416 volts AC and would consume about 74 kilowatts uh, at full power. The heat exchanger is liquid to liquid, which means that liquid flows on both sides of the heat exchanger. That is on the side that's connected to the IT equipment and likewise on the side of the heat exchanger that is connected to the facility uh, liquid loop. So wetted materials are selected to be compatible with DI water as well as the water and propylene glycol mixture PG25, which is commonly used throughout the industry. And finally, the form factor is about five and a half feet wide, close to eight feet tall, and about four feet deep. Now we're very excited to see that uh, there are already several uh, liquid cooling industry players who have built a Project Deschutes CDUs, 
and actually have them here on display at the OCP Summit. And one thing you might notice is that while the images in this presentation are consistent with what is published in the OCP spec, they're not exactly the same as what you may have seen out on the summit floor. And the reason for this is that we've already been fast at work with the, the CDU vendors on implementing design changes that um, will be reflected in the next release of the project issued specification. Nevertheless, the overall architecture and, and system components are generally the same uh, between what you're seeing on this presentation and what is shown on the floor. Now with that disclaimer, let's take a closer look at the uh, design details. On the secondary side of the CDU or the technology cooling loop side of the CDU, the architecture is such that the CDU contains two pumps, three heat exchangers, four filters, and pressure, temperature, and other flow and other telemetry. The pumps are driven by variable frequency drives and are intended to be redundant such that each pump can deliver the hydraulic capacity targets. The heat exchangers are arranged in parallel and are optimized for thermal performance while minimizing pressure drop on both the primary or facility side and the technology sides of the CDU. Mechanical fittings and uh, flexible hoses are selected to take up the mechanical tolerances that are inherent in the brace plate heat exchanger manufacturing processes uh, and therefore enable the mechanical integration of the heat exchangers into the CDU assembly. There, on the primary side of the CDU, there's filtration as well as a valve which regulates the, uh, the flow that is consumed from the facility. There's also a programmable logic controller or PLC for telemetry monitoring as well as to control the pumps to maintain a fixed differential pressure set point on the secondary side of the CDU and to control the valve on the primary side of the CDU to maintain a fixed approach temperature set point. But the controller can also support other controls methods. The metallic piping is stainless steel and the CDU would be found in an enclosure uh, that is not shown here. Now, yes, the animation works. I was kind of nervous about that. And so we've provided this, this fun animation uh, which shows how the, CD, the CDU is integrated. And while the animation is of a simplified assembly, it's, it's shown here and it's in, intended to give you a flavor of the different uh, subsystems and components that are in the CDU. I'll just let this one finish up uh, before I move on. So it's there just for fun. And in addition to the CDU, the project to shoot specification also includes the technical design details of the Redmond Hot Isle Containment Data Center structure. Now this Redmond interface specification is provided to the OCP community to help enable the deployment of high density liquid cooled racks. And as I mentioned early in the presentation, the structure is compatible with CDUs as well as rear door heat exchangers behind each IT rack. And the rear door heat exchangers would be anchored to the structure floor such that they would not require any physical or mechanical support from the IT racks themselves. In addition to that, this structure supports the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder deployment of liquid-cooled IT racks that are 28 inches wide, up to 50 inches deep, and uh, up to 90 and a half inches tall. And the design of the structure is such that racks of different depths could be deployed uh, in a front-justified manner where the containment plenums take up the differences in the rack depth. And similarly, the uh, racks of different heights can be deployed shoulder to shoulder where the uh, containment plenums take up the, the differences in height. The structure also supports eight 600 amp bus ducts, four per side, uh, that deliver power to the high power density racks in a four makes three configuration, and the structure height of 14 feet 
uh, we found uh, would be accommodated in many colo data centers throughout the world. And with that, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Chi, who will be walking you through the supply chain strategy of Project Deschutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> my name is Chi. I am the strategic sourcing manager in Google. I see a lot of familiar faces down there. Thank you for coming to this talk. Jorge and I worked on project issues generation one through four for many, many years. We deployed a total of more than one gigawatt of Deschutes so far. We achieved 5.9, 99.999 reliability. Now we are releasing Deschutes Project 5 to the community. My end goal is, how do I, green button? And go back, okay. All right, here it is. My end goal, I want to build abundant capacity that provides worldwide availability within 10 to 12 weeks of lead time at very reasonable and competitive cost. Jorge started working on Deschutes 5 last year, Q4, and we together released our version 0.75 to 10 suppliers earlier this year. And then we released 0.8 specification to OCP community in September. I know since then, my 10 supplier number is increasing. And I can see this 10 is going to be increasing more and more. I don't know how to count, though. But you may ask, gee, with that many suppliers, how do you manage them? How do you define, how do you decide which one you are going to buy your CDU from? You know, my answer, my ultimate answer will be, I will go to supplier A's website, click 500, drop into my shopping cart, I pick out my deep pocket and check it out. And I will tell Gemini, Gemini, I actually totally need 2300. Go figure which suppliers out of the 10 plus suppliers Dan, you can buy from and come back to me. Within five minutes, Jim and I say, hey, all done, 2300. They will all show up within three months. They will all arrive three months later, no data on arrival, no leaks, no clocks, no reliability ever problems. What a wonderful world we are going to live in. But from here to the beautiful world that we want to live in, I do have to walk very carefully and work smartly with all of you. So out of all the 10 plus suppliers, I'm going to categorize them into three categories. I'm going to talk about the top and the bottom first, and then come back to the middle. So for Google internal deployments, I am going to buy from ABL, approved vendor list. Currently, I have two spots. And I want the lead time of these suppliers to be four weeks. And out of one to three, one to two manufacturing sites, three is better, of course. And I work day in and day out with these ABLs. I know exactly their whole supply chain, and I know their manufacturing plan. I know their control plan. I know their cycle time, their labor, their yield, and we have an open book on the cost, and we plan our capacity, plan our capacity together with our 18 to 24 months of forecast. 
I use them for our own data center deployments. So now let's go down to the category RVL, recommended vendor list. These are the suppliers. I really don't have enough resource or time to manage them. However, I encourage every one of these RVLs, whoever wants to be our RVLs, to make your samples to our functional specification, test to our quality and reliability specification, and certify yourselves with UL, EMC, and any other related safety compliances that you need to comply to. Submit the paper, self-qualification data to me, a whole package. Jorge and the whole team and myself will be reviewing your paper call. If we feel everything is in check, stamp it. You are our RBL. We only have two AVLs. What if some quality excursion happens with these two AVLs? What if there is just some force majeure event? I cannot get enough. Or, you know, Google's demand has just exploded. How many acts within 12 months? I just don't get enough capacity. What do I do? I rank all the RVLs, pick the best of the best of the RVLs, and call them reserved AVL. In the cases when AVL, my true AVL, current AVL, they're having issues, I can quickly convert those reserved AVLs into AVL within a couple of, I hope, a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two. I can start buying from the reserved AVLs. Now the question comes, right? Chi, we're here. You're not buying from us. You're only buying from AVL and RV, reserved RVL. Then when can we have a chance to sell it to you, Google? I know everybody wants to ask. My answer is, Yes, you will be able to sell it to us. When? When you are ready. When you are ready. But Chi, here's another question. If you are even, not even buying from us, we're not manufacturing, how can we be ready? So, well, this is the magic of the supply chain over here. You can sell it to Colos with Google as the end customer. You can sell it to other CSPs. You can also sell it to other colos with <laughs> two minutes, yeah. Sell colos with other CSPs as end customers, right? The market you create, you know our product. You know how to manufacture it. You know how to certify it. You create the product. Let me speed up for Components, I will only, I make this simple. AVL and RVLs, okay. Here I listed 16 major components. Currently we only have one supplier on our released bomb. I like to get it to two or three. What is even more I really want to talk to this audience is all the CDU suppliers, all the component suppliers. Don't reframe yourself, join this community, qualify. The more and more CDU suppliers and component suppliers expand the ecosystem, make it more available. Remember, our goal is to make it available within 10 to 12 weeks of lead time worldwide at a very competitive cost. Of course, reasonable, right? Everybody is here to make money. We want to make it reasonable. Call to action. We currently only released 0.8 version. There's room for you to input all the DFM, great ideas, how you can, however, make it more uh, easier to manufacture, make it more efficient, let us know. We'll incorporate your information, and we are targeting to release our 1.0 specification in September, actually in November this year. And thank you very much. We need to scale, and open is the key to scale. Thank you very much.